Oh, thank you. Grab a seat. Grab a seat, grab a seat. I do want you to make some noise uh, for some special people, though, because um, it has been, it's a joy in this moment to be here with you guys. But I've got some of the Mosaic staff here, and, and uh, so, would you, Mosaic, would you stand up? Would you please, please do that? Can you give them a hand? You got some? Awesome, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, Mosaic is, uh, is what it is because of them, so I'm so grateful for them and just, just, just to be in this moment. I don't know if you guys know this, but this is very surreal for me um, because uh, 19 years ago, the, we, this, the stage was half the size, and uh, I married Ashley Fossil right in this space. Michael Morris did our, our, our marriage and uh, our vows, and man, I'll tell you, it's, so, it's very weird to be here. I'll tell you why, because I, I kind of speak all over the place, right? I've been internationally, but when I come here, it's like coming home, and I'm like super nervous, and I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Dad's watching. <laughs> oh, no, and then and, and Josh, my brother, he's no help at all, because he's making fun of everything I do, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to talk about, and then tonight after worship, I'm like, why am I doing this? I don't need to talk. Let's get, just get everybody on here. Let's just sing forever till Jesus comes back. Then Greg gets up here, starts talking. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, I had a moment. I'm like, I'm going to run away. I'm going to run away right now. No one's going to know. But, uh, man, so thankful for you guys. So, so grateful for this moment. Um, so this mo- uh, tonight, though, what I want to do is I want to talk about something that I think, um, I think that all, we, we all need to hear, and I need to hear this the most. So I've been you know, thinking about, okay, what am I going to talk about? And, and this is a message I've done before, okay? So if you're Mosaic staff, just pretend. <laughs> um, but I hate this message. I hate it. Oh, my gosh, I hate it. What is hate it? I hate it because I'm like, I, I don't like this. I don't like this message because it has a lot to do with like the kind of person you really are versus the kind of person you pretend to be. You know, it's like, it's so hard for me. It's just tough. I don't know about you guys because there's a, there's a kind of person that I aspire to be, right? Like I'm a dad, right? I got two kids. I aspire to be like an amazing father, amazing husband. I aspire to be an amazing pastor, Christian leader, all that thing. I mean, I have this list of all the things I aspire to be and then that's, that's, that's that me, and then there's the real me. <laughs> then it's the real me, right? It's the real me. And sometimes I don't think that people understand that, that you can fake it really well. In fact, it's so funny because sometimes you don't even know what you're kind of sending out, the vibe you're sending out. Okay, for, for example, I was debating if I should even share this story, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Okay, so several years ago, Ashley and I on our, I think it was like a, some, um, it was a, a wedding anniversary or something like that. We were in Jamaica, all-inclusive resort kind of a situation. You know, you pay once, you don't have to worry about it. You know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, so it's beautiful. It's amazing. So it's like three nights, four nights. So we're there. We meet a couple, an older couple. So we're like, oh, man, these, these, this couple is cool. We're going to learn from them about marriage and stuff like that. They were, I, I, I our conversations were pretty much led me to believe that they were like Catholic or something like that. But what, we met them, and then the night, that night, we ended up at the same restaurant. You know these places, right? You, you, you can eat wherever, and it's cool. Like, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. So we ended up eating with them every night. Every night. The last night of our trip, they're there. We're talking. I'm, next, I'm sitting next to the wife, and Ashley's there, and the husband's there, and we start talking. And then she starts off, and she goes, so by the way, like we were having such a good time, right, all these days. She goes, by the way, what do you do? <laughs> and in my head, I was like, don't ruin this. <laughs> don't. And so I just said it. I was like, you don't want to ask me that. You don't want to ask. And she goes, what do you mean? We're like, no, that's not, we have a good thing going here. Listen, this is really good. Because the, the other night she had said some things, and I was like, if I tell her what I do, she's going to go feel bad. I don't want to do this. So I'm like, no, you don't want to know. You don't want to know. And her husband's like, hey, 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 forget about it. Forget about it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, forget about it. And she goes, no, no, what do you do? Is it illegal? <laughs> she's like really curious. And I was like, no, no, it's not illegal. Not in this country yet. It's not. <laughs> and, and, I, and I forget about it. 30 seconds later, all of a sudden, she goes, she whispers to me. She turns to me. She goes, I know it. And I go, what? She goes, are you a stripper? (laughs) 
no, no, I'm not a stripper. I'm a pastor. And I, she goes, oh, I am so sorry. She starts doing, she does the whole, I was like, it's all right, it's all right. It's all right. That night I was like, hon, do I give off a stripper vibe? What do I do? Chip, Judd, where are you? Do I do that? It's the craziest thing, right? It's the craziest thing. I think, I think, I think the problem is, is that we, we, we can be comfortable living in two different worlds. And for some of us, you know, we can project something, and we, if we project it right, people believe who we are. And others of us, we can project it right, but we know what's in, really inside of us. And I just want to ask you today, are you the person uh, that you really are? Like, uh, are you becoming the person that you know that your soul tells you that you can become? Like, is there a difference between the person you are aspiring to be versus the person you really are, or projecting to be versus the, the person you really are? The, one, the person that people think on Instagram or social media that you are versus the person you really are. In 1969 in the UK, um, there was this phrase that came famous. I got a picture of it. And basically, it was like the, the underground transportation. And what they did was they had this sign the campaign made up. And basically, they, they began this, using this phrase called mind the gap. Mind the gap. Can you say that with me? Mind the gap. So basically what they wanted to do was make sure that people understood that when we get on this subway, that there was an actual gap between this train and the actual floor. And so the phrase was very popular. Now, all of a sudden, it's a, it's a book. It's all kinds of things. But basically, I, the idea was, hey, friends, there is a gap between where you are and where you're going to go. And you have to mind that gap. Because if you don't mind that gap, you're going to fall in. And I, if, the reason why I, love, I hate this message is because I know great men and women like myself who've done what I do, who've done it better than I do, that have not minded the gap. And they've fallen in. Because at some point, their character was not enough to get them through. Sometimes they just didn't mind that gap. And for some, for some of us, I think, I think the challenge tonight is this is that are you really that person that you're pretending to be? Or are you a different person? And what are you going to do? I mean, you can feel guilty about it, feel horrible about it, repent, all that stuff. You can do all that. But is there something else you need to do? Is there something else you need to understand? And I think the scriptures are very clear. In fact, there's a story that I want to take you to. If you've got your Bibles, grab those. And we'll go to Mark chapter 10. And this is a story of Jesus, and he's talking to a guy and he basically has this moment where he tells the guy, I need you, th 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 uh, uh, you need to mind the gap. In fact, he's basically telling him, um, hey, I, 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 I'm not quite sure you know who you think you are. So here's how the story goes, okay? So I, when I read like, a story of Jesus, I like to really get into it, all right? So let, let just, let's just pretend like we're in this moment. So this is Mark chapter 10, verses 17 to 27. So this is how it starts. Verse 17, it says, As Jesus was starting out on his way to Jerusalem, a man came running after him, running after him, and did what? What did he do? He knelt down. He knelt, kneels down. He says, good teacher, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Okay? Now, who's there? You got the disciples. I'm sure Peter was there. Andrew's there. Everybody's there, right? Right? And then verse 18, Jesus says, hey, why do you call me good? I'm sure the disciples are like, oh, this is going to get good. <laughs> Peter's like, yeah, mess him up. You never give me a straight answer. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> let's do this. Let's do this. This is the first time the disciples are like, oh, this is going to be good. Why do you call me good? Stand up. Why do you call me good? That's not what I was asking. But then Jesus goes, only God is good. Like he's saying, basically, you don't even, I don't think you understand. I'm just going to give you a teaser here. I don't think you understand what is good and what is bad? Because if you really understood, you understood that what's good is really God. Are you calling me God? Anywho. And then Jesus goes, but, that I, but I digress. <laughs> then he goes, he says, but to answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not murder. You must not commit what? Adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. You must not uh, cheat anyone. Honor your what? Honor. Honor, okay. Verse 20. Teacher. Teacher, guy stands up. Hey, teacher. Well, I've obeyed all these things since I was young. Which I am sure some of the disciples are like, really? You did? You're in middle school with me. I don't think so. I know you're rich, but no, you didn't do that. 
I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know about really all, the, all of these. You've done all of these things, really, all of these things. It's like, I've done all of these things since I was young, yeah. And then this mind the gap moment happens. Then Jesus has this moment that goes, hey, hey, listen to me. And he goes, and he says this. This is what happens. Verse 21, looking at the man, Jesus felt what? Genuine love, Genuine love for him. And then he said this. Okay, let's just go with that. Let's just go with everything that you've done. There's still one thing you need to do. There's only one thing you haven't done. Go sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. Then, then, come follow me. At this man, at this, at this, the man's face fell and he went away sad for he had, what, many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to the disciples, how hard is it for a rich, the rich to enter the kingdom of God? Like disciples knew, this was not a question. This was just a statement. Then verse 24 says, this amazed them. Then Jesus said again, dear children, it is very hard to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were astonished, astounded. Then, who in the world can be saved, they asked. Jesus looked at them intently and said this. Humanly speaking, it is what? Impossible, but not with God. Everything is possible with God. What in the world is happening here? What in the world is happening? What's happening is that Jesus is talking about something, the, uh, a character modification, a kind of an evolution of your soul from the inside out. He's talking about, hey, here's what I need you to do. I need you to walk away from everything that defines you. Number one, can you do that? Number two, I want you to come follow me. I want you to just leave everything and follow me. Can you do that? He says, I know, I, 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 I know you want inter- eternal life. I know you want this, this abundant life. I know the kind of life you want to live. Here's what I need you to do. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to walk away from everything that gives you identity. Can you do that? Do you see why I hate this message? Because I can be in a worship service like this and I go, Jesus is everything. And then tomorrow I'm like, Jesus is not every everything. Like I need some other stuff. (laughs) Like I can make a lot of promises during worship. I don't know if you guys, I mean, I don't know if you guys know this. You made a lot of promises today. (laughs) A lot of commitments. A lot of stuff. But it's tough when Jesus comes to us and says, hey, hey, I know, I know you want to be this person. And he goes, I, uh, I love you, but you're not that guy. You're not that woman. You could, you could be, you could be, but you're not. You're just, you're just not. You have to mine that gap. And then Jesus goes, hey, but there is, an, there is a solution. Because the disciples are like, I'm sure Peter's the guy who's like, oh, oh, we're done then. I am, I'm done. It's over for me. He goes, I'll tell you how it works. It works from the inside out. It works with, with the Spirit of God actually doing something inside of you. Humanly, it is not possible. But with God, everything is possible. There is something, the, the, the human spirit, the human uh, Race actually needs something. True transformation to give you eternal life actually comes from the inside out. Now, what's interesting about this is the science have kind of, you know, they've kind of uh, discovered this or caught up to what God has been doing all this time. There's an interesting uh, book out there. It's called Strangers to Ourselves. It's written by a guy named Timothy uh, Wilson. And he talks about this adaptive subconscious or uh, adaptive uh, unconscious, and he basically says this, okay? He basically says, like, there are certain things that your subconscious is in control of, and it's going to do certain things, and you have no control over it. Like, for example, have you ever said something, and you said, I wish I didn't say that? Anybody? I mean, 
You, th- you, you, wanted, you thought it, you just didn't want to say it, but you did it. Have you ever done anything that you thought, oh, I wish I didn't do that? Have you ever reacted in a way that your brain did not have enough time to actually understand what you were doing? Have you ever been in a situation on, in traffic? So one, in traffic. In Mount Pleasant. And you said something. You did something. Have you ever been in a situation where you know you're actually going to get hit by a car and your brain doesn't have enough time to process, but your body knows it's going to happen? What does it do? Locks up. They call this, um, this idea, this, um, uh, this brain uh, being mind blind, where basically your body has a way to know and sense that it's something is happening because your sight tells you, your brain doesn't have enough time to fill you in on the details, but it tells your body to become like armor so you get stiff because you know you're going to get an impact. It is the craziest thing. There's, there's something about the fact that you and I were made in such a way that there's something inside of us that actually controls everything that's outside of us. And so like this, these things that we talk about, how God wants to change us from the what? Inside out. It's actually really true. It's not like, whoa, this sounds cool. There is something inside of us that has the ability to change everything outside of us. And what's really interesting about this is that some of these people, some really researchers have done this. They've talked to, talked to actually police officers. They've talked to people who, who are in crisis situations. And they've discovered something, that all the amount of training and all the amount of knowledge does not prepare a person for the actual event. What they have realized is that they have to actually, in fact, train their subconsciousness, which is the craziest thing. But basically, they've figured out that because we are so complicated, it does not matter what we know. You actually have to experience something that's very real for, to train your subconscious to actually do what it needs to do. Now, why is this like boring for some of you? The reason is, is because we think, oh, I just need to know certain things because we know that the truth will set us free. Because once we know the truth, and the truth will do what? Set us free, which is incomplete. It's not. Experiencing truth, living it out, sets you free. Knowing it doesn't do jack. I mean, we can say, hey, it doesn't do jack. It doesn't do anything. You know so much. I know so much. I do, I do half of it. Knowing it is not the deal. You have to, in fact, you have to, in fact, involve your soul, spirit, and body in a experience to train your subconsciousness to come, to grow from the inside out. What does this have to do with anything? Because Jesus said, "Hey, you can come and say, hey, what do I need? Give me a list. Just give me a list. I'll do it.'" He says, "It's, it's you're deeper than that. You're deeper than that." It doesn't work like that. I can't give you a list of all the things. I can give you a list, it doesn't work. The the, the thing that you're thinking about, what you really want to do, and what you really want to experience is something that's from the inside out. And what I need you to understand this is that if you will let me in the inside, if you will give up everything that defines you and gives you identity and walk away from that, and then you will actually follow me, following me, following the lead of my spirit, following the move that I'm trying to move in, 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 in your city, in your space, in your world, in your country, in your in your world, if you would follow that, it will change you from the inside out. And here's the deal, here's the deal though, is that the, the key thing here, the key thing here is, is that when I ask you to do something, you have to do it. If you don't do it, you're not gonna train anything. And see, that's why, that's why I hate this message. Because I have to actually obey. Like I actually, when I feel God telling me to do something, I actually have to do it. Bites, doesn't it? I just wish I could just sing about it and be fine. I actually have to do something. Some of you are locked in a prison and you've heard the voice of the prophet Moses. You are in bondage, you can be set free and you love it. 
but some of you need to hear the voice of another prophet, more than a prophet, Jesus, that says this, you think you are free, you are enslaved. But when I look at you, I have what? Genuine love for you. I need you to understand what your soul wants is really to let go of all the possessions, all the expectations, all these things, and do what? Come follow me. Come follow me. Not come stay with me, because I'm, I'm moving around. <laughs> come follow me. Do you know why? You, do you feel now why I hate this message? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. I hate it. I didn't want to talk about it. So scientists, this is another nerdy thing, but so scientists have figured out um, you know, a long time ago, and we know this, is that the way our brain communicates to our body in terms of how it controls our organs is through, you know, electromagnetic pulses. If you didn't know that, write that down. <laughs> You're welcome. That's how it does it. That's how your body knows what to do. Hey, I feel this, da, da, da. Your brain communicates to your organs. It has a language, it knows. Recently, heart math organiz uh, organization, like if you wanna look it up, it's heartmath.com. They have discovered that beside your brain, your heart sends out electromagnetic pulses as well. Did you know that? In fact, it sends out five times more. <laughs> who is it talking to? Who is, a, who is it talking to? Have you ever, like, have you ever, like, uh, been at a game and your team is playing and you're like, what's wrong with you guys? Anybody? Have you ever said, you guys didn't play with all your heart. What happened to your heart? What happened? Have you ever been in a different experience where you're actually watching someone or something like that or, and then someone uh, does something or performs a certain way or says something or you, he's communicating or she's communicating and all of a sudden you have this thought, I can feel his heart. Do you know why? Because you actually can. They've discovered that those electromagnetic pulses that generate not from your mind, but from your heart, can be felt three to five, five feet away. So when you feel like you can feel someone's heart, you're actually feeling their heart. You're actually feeling that. Why is this important? I'm glad you asked. Because <laughs> here's what the scripture says. Above all else, guard what? I thought it was your mind. I thought it was my tongue. No. Above all else, guard your heart. For what? Everything you do flows from it. Everything. We've just figured out why. But God says, please understand. Out of this thing, you affect everything. Out of this thing. And for some of you, man, you're doing so many things right, you're still enslaved. Because you're doing a list of things. A list of really good things. And God's saying, hey, I... I I just want you to know something. When I look at you, you know what I feel? What? Genuine love. Like, I don't look at you and go, are you kidding me? You're going to keep doing that? That's dumb. I look at you and I go, oh my gosh, I, I need a moment. I need a moment. Genuine love. How in the world did Mark, who wrote that, know that Jesus felt genuine love. He's making it up. He's like, I, got, I need something here. I need something here. 
I need to bring the reader in. <laughs> how, how, how do you do that? Have you ever seen something happen between two people? And you went, oh, there's something happening right there. Because they're like tearing up and I am crying. Stop it. <laughs> I wonder if Mark was like, oh, what the? Is Jesus having a moment here? What is going on here? He never did that for me. <laughs> and he goes, oh, hold on. I got I to gotta write this down. There was a moment where Jesus stopped, looked at that person and said, I know you've been trying so hard. Do you understand? I know, I know people have done things. I know, I know, I know you really, really want to be the person you would aspire to be. I know what's inside of you. I know, I know you want to be better. I know you want to break out of this. I know you want to live the life you were created to live. I know, I get that, I get that. I'm looking at you and my heart is breaking. But I need you to understand, I can't give you a list. You have to let go of everything that gives you identity. And you got to follow me. It is the only way. Now, I don't know whose heart broke more when the guy goes, I'm out. I can't do that. I can't do that. And that's why Jesus goes, oh my gosh. That's why it's so hard, man. It's so hard. So, let me end this horrible, awkward, <laughs> just depressing sermon. <laughs> you know why I hate this, right? I told you, I told you I hated it. But it's the only thing. It's the only thing. Can I give you one last quote? So, this quote has been haunting me because I love this idea of like that God is doing something in me and making me into a person that I never really could ever do on my own. And I, I know that, that I'm becoming a person and I've got to be so aware of that. This quote is by actually uh, by a Jewish mystic and uh, his name is uh, the Baal Shem To. And he writes this quote uh, and I just love it. It says this, it says, if I fall, let me fall, for the one who I'm becoming will catch me. And I was like, when I heard that, I was like, I instantly thought, he who began a good work in you is what? Not faithful? It's faithful. To finish what, 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 what? What, who started? You started? You didn't start Jack, no, you didn't. You didn't. <laughs> he started. He started. He is faithful if you would just move in that direction. What do we say in our benediction? Because we do it, we have the same benediction, by the way. <laughs> and Mosaic. But now, to him who is able to do what? Then what? Oh, stop. <laughs> According to whose power? Where? In us. In us. I just wonder tonight, man. I just wonder tonight. I know some of you on a first one day, you've gone to the uh, you've gone to the cross. You've gone had prayer. You've like candles, you've repented, you've done a lot of things to inherit eternal life. I just wonder, have you ever let go of what defines you? Have you ever just said, I'm gonna follow you. I'm signing up for a ride of my life. I'm signing up. What would that change? Let me tell you everything. The only way that you will be transformed into the person you were meant to be if it happens from the inside out. And only God can do that.
So, I wanna pray for you. Can I do that? Let's stand together, let's do that. So, what is he saying to you? I think for some of us, you don't believe it. He looks at you and he has genuine love for you. Genuine love. For others of you, he's saying, hey, hey, uh, hey let's just talk about this. You know you're not that person, right? You're, no, you're not that person, right? You know that. You know how I got reminded? I was in a car with my, um, with my kids and Ashley. We were going somewhere, and we were talking about an iPhone charger that I forgot, or she'd forgot or something. And, and I said, oh, no, that's all right. I have, an, I have another one. She goes, how did you get another one? I said, well, you know, the other day I was on a trip, and I was in my hotel room, someone left the charger there. So I just grabbed it, and uh, so I've got one. Why are you laughing? You don't do that? Anywho, <laughs> and uh, so I said, so I've got one, you're good. And all of a sudden, my daughter, she goes, hey, Dad, <laughs> I thought we were not supposed to things that didn't belong to us. <laughs> and I was like, well, you shut your mouth. <laughs> and my son pipes up, you know, you could have taken the charger to the the front desk. <laughs> I was like, get out of the car. <laughs> At that moment, I was like, well, I, oh God, I'm not. I'm not that guy. I got work to do. Some of you got work to do. But he looks at you and has what? Genuine love for you. He sees you like you've never seen yourself. Hey, let's just pray. Lord God, we want eternal life. We want eternal life. Desperately. We know we have tried so many things. We've tried so many ways. And Father, for some of us, tonight is a, is a night that we face not anyone else but our own selves. Not even you. We face ourselves. Because we know that if we own who we are, like, like if we own our story, then we get, the, we get to write its ending. But if we don't own it, then someone else will. And some other situation will. So God, I pray for us, this, this amazing church, that we would own who we are. God, we are not the people we aspire to be at times. We're not. And guess what? You know that. And sometimes we pretend to be bigger and badder than we really are. And we're just saying right now, I know you don't even want an apology. All you want is, hey, just let go. Let go, follow me. Let go, follow me. Let me move in you. So God, I pray that tonight we would do the hard work of letting go of everything that defines us, no longer holding on to our resources, possessions, no, no, no longer holding on to the pain even for some of us. God, for some of us uh, here, we are like, this, we are like the, the woman, the woman who, who, who snuck up and got a healing from you. But God, I, 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 we've always thought of us as the, the, the person that we needed, all, that we need to come and touch Jesus and we needed to get the healing. But God, that story is so amazing because you stopped and you showed all of us, 
what to really do and what we're really called to. We're actually not called to be the woman with the issue. We're called to be Jesus in that story. And for some of us, we've been stuck with being the one with the issue for so long. And so God, I'm burdened, and I know this church has so much at stake and such an opportunity. I pray that this church would not be the church with the issue. It would be the Jesus in the story. Because as long as we're the ones with all the issues, we can never be you. And so God, I pray that tonight we would let go and we would follow you wholehearted after you. So God, do a work in us that only you can do. In Jesus' name.